Hey guys, it's Raining here at Milo Domestic Church. I am coming to you guys today to do a video all about the Titus 2 woman. I had someone, a couple of people actually request this over the last, I don't know, couple of months, and I just haven't gotten around to doing it. I did do a video about the Proverbs 31 woman, so I will put that down in the description box. There is going to be two parts to this. First, kind of like when we are seeking instruction and we are seeking out a Titus 2 woman, and then also kind of going along with that, how we can be a Titus 2 woman to other women. First, I have my Bible here, and I suggest, if you can, to get tabs like this. They have been so helpful. Uh, it is a little time-consuming putting them in, but it's so worth it in the long run. I love it. So, Titus is like a super short book of the Bible. Um, it's actually a letter, and literally, it's like, here's the beginning. It's so thin, I'm like skipping the page. And that's it, that's like it. It's like really short. <laughs> but it's filled with lots of interesting information on how in which to help every Christian in any aspect of their life, how to live as a Christian. Um, I think sometimes we take that for granted because we live in a time period where we have so many choices, but during this time period, and even now in the world in some places, people have very little choices and this is just where their state in life is. And one thing I love so much about Jesus is yes, he would have loved to come and just make everything perfect, but at the same time, he wanted to come and bring everything, all his message to everyone wherever they were, and he wasn't gonna leave anyone out because of whatever state of life they were in. And I think that's, that's like really great. <laughs> I mean, that's the best way I can explain it. Being a convert and becoming a Christian, um, you know, old, far, uh, later in my life, I was really amazed with that because I thought that was pretty, pretty awesome. Anyway, I'm not doing a good job explaining that. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read to you the part that has to do with what we're talking about today, which is the Titus 2 woman. When you first start off, it's uh, basically in a section called Teaching the Christian Life. Uh, there's one, there says Christian behavior. They talk about husbands, they talk about wives, younger men, they talk about people that are in the life of slavery. Um, and then there's a transformation of life. It's just, it's a really good letter in the Bible, a book of the Bible, so I would highly recommend you go ahead and read it yourself. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and read it here. Okay, so Titus 2, woman. It starts off with Titus 2, chapter 2, verse 3. This is what verse 3 says. It goes from verse 3 to verse 5. Similarly, young, oh, excuse me, older women should be reverent in their behavior, not slanderers, not addicted to drink, teaching what is good, verse 4 so that they may train younger women to, live the, to love their husbands and children, verse five, to be self-controlled, chaste, good homemakers, under the control of their husbands, so that the word of God may not be discredited. It's like a lot of gems right there, guys. So what I did was I broke it up, because I like things to be practical. <laughs> I broke it up by verse, and then by each thing that is spoken about here. So the first thing I did was I took Titus 2, Chapter two, verse three, okay? Similarly, older women should be reverent in their behavior, not slanders, not addicted to drink, and teaching what is good. Now, like I said, there's two parts to this. There's one, if you're looking for a Titus two women in your life to help you to instruct, uh, like to instruct you in life, and pardon me guys, I am almost in my third trimester of this pregnancy, so I continually get out of breath, so that's what that is. <laughs> So yes, if you're looking for a Titus two woman in your life, this is gonna help you to kind of identify the woman that you're looking for, or women that you're looking for to help you and to help to instruct you in your Christian walk as a young um, Christian woman. And likewise, if you're at a stage in your life where I feel like I'm actually starting to enter into that, I'm just turning 34, but I'm having my sixth baby, and I've been married since I was 18, and we've done so much in our lives and worked for the church and moved all over and i just feel like i'm getting to a place in my life where i can feel this crossover happening and it's really important if you feel like that crossover is happening um that you learn what it means to be a titus to woman so you can help instruct a younger woman in your walk now obviously i'm still looking for women to instruct me that are you know 10 20 30 years plus uh, farther in their Christian walk than I am, but I'm just saying if you can feel yourself like, and this is what I mean, if all of a sudden you start feeling like younger women are asking you for instruction in the Christian walk, I was like kind of surprised by that. I kind of feel like, why are you asking me? <laughs> like, I am 
nothing. And I felt like, you know, but then I started to realize that I had walked a walk that they hadn't walked yet and they were looking for instruction in that. So it's good to prepare ourselves because God might be calling you to this sooner than you realize. So those are the two parts that I wanted to say that are being discussed. Okay, so verse three, four things are spoken about. Being reverent, not being slanderers, not addicted to drink, and teaching good, okay? So I'm gonna read it to you again, verse three. Similarly, older women should be reverent in their behavior, not slanderers, not addicted to drink, and teaching what is good. So what I did was I broke all those down, starting with what it means to be reverent. I kind of looked it up. I knew what the word meant, like with what I've learned, but I wanted to have it like more of like, I think I looked up like Bible Hub or something like that to get um, a description. And it said, godly fear, taking hold of what God calls is good. Okay, this is really important. This was a huge part of my walk when I really started to walk the Christian walk, the Christian way of life, was that I recognized that my mind and my heart were so secular. I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean so of the world. Like whatever the world was teaching, that's what I was thinking. That's where my heart was. Now, am I speaking ill of people? I wanna, I wanna go ahead and preface this right now. No, I am not. I am not trying to say that someone who is secular living in the world doesn't have anything to offer. I think that's insane. That's crazy <laughs> because every human being has been made by God and they all have their own gifts and they all have their own strengths and they all bring something you know, to the world and to the community. But since I'm speaking about Titus 2, that, you know, is pointing to the fact that you probably are a Christian woman or you're curious about what this is, but what a young Christian woman looking towards an older Christian woman for this walk. So though we can definitely learn wonderful things from older women who are, um, you know, not Christian, maybe they're offering us other things that are fantastic. If we are specifically looking for a Titus II woman, that means we are looking for a Christian woman that has walked the Christian walk for a while and their minds and their hearts and everything has been transformed by the word of God and by his church. And so that's what I'm talking about here. I just wanted to make sure to say that because I think that's important to say. But okay, so reverent, godly fear, taking hold of what God calls is good. So in my beginning of my Christian walk, I had to work so hard on kind of that inner work, prayer, reading the Bible, pouring myself into scripture, really seeking out Titus to women, because I literally did not know what it meant to be a God-fearing woman. I didn't know what that looked like. I didn't know how to act. I didn't know how to behave. Uh, my relationship with my husband was completely based on worldly advice, and so... There was definitely a lack there we were you know trying to figure out how to be a wife how to be you know all of these things so for me this is a big one the part that says taking hold of what god calls is good not what the world calls you know is good what god does what does the bible say about the goodness of god you know what does church teaching say about the goodness of god and learning about it and letting it become part of who we are so that when we're making decisions it's not based on something the world has told us is a good or what is okay we want to know what is good and pleasing to god okay the second part of this uh uh, verse three, I think is a big one for women. It's really, can be a real challenge sometimes for women, but it says not slanderers, okay? So when you're seeking out someone to help you with instruction in the Christian walk, or you're you know, encouraging and helping a young woman, this is important, and this is part, important regardless as a Christian, to not be a slanderer. So I looked up the word slander, just in case if someone needed a definition. Um, and I wrote down some words that were similar to it. So spreading rumors malicious, false, detraction. Detraction is case if someone doesn't know what that is. That is, um, it's a sin and it's basically knowing the sinful behavior of another person when you have no business knowing. Like when you're at the supermarket, the grocery store, and you see those magazines with all the stuff going on with famous people and some of it's really sinful, that's kind of detraction because their sins are none of our business. That's not our business, so <laughs> detraction. Um, and this is also, I wrote this down, I think this is important. This is against the eighth commandment. So thou shalt not bear witness, false witness, bear false witness against thy neighbor. That's a commandment, okay? Like we are not supposed to be gossiping. Ruining someone's reputation is a big deal. And even if something is true, that's where detraction comes in. If it's not our business to know, or if we're not like specifically helping out this person, there is no reason to talk about it. So when you're, when you're, 
when you're seeking out instruction from an older woman and you find that every time you're, you're with her, you feel like there's lots of gossiping going on and you feel like you're finding out you know, sinful behaviors of other people that you really have no business of knowing, that's a good indication that maybe that aspect of a relationship, the instructional part of Christian, maybe that's not part of your relationship. Maybe your relationship is gonna be something different. Maybe you have a visit from time to time and have some tea or like, you know, maybe you guys do some type of crafting together and that's fine, but maybe this isn't that Titus 2 instruction you're searching for. And again, I wanna be clear, I'm not trying to say to end relationships if they're not perfect or ideal. I just mean if you're looking specifically for a Titus 2 woman, it says, that the woman is to not slander others. Okay, so that's just important. And it's important for us to remember as Christian women, I mean, I think anybody, but gossiping and ruining other people's like reputation is just terrible. Like it's not good to do that. I remember being gossiped about horribly when I was younger and just the feeling was terrible because nothing you said mattered. Once these rumors are spread, it's like, and so reputation is really important. And I think it's important to respect other people's relationships, um, excuse me, their reputation as well. Okay, so, and the next part is addicted to drink. Now this one I think can translate even farther than just drink like an alcohol because we can be addicted to a lot of things. Now I don't necessarily know if they're talking about addiction as in the word that we understand it today. Like if someone has an addiction to something, it can be really hard to break. And I think some people, you know, that are really trying, you know, they go to AA or they go to different, you know, trying to seek different types of help. And they're really trying to have self-control and work through it. But addiction is really, really hard. So I'm, I, I want to be clear. I'm not like putting down any person that has an addiction because it is a real challenge. But what they're talking about addicted to drink, I think of what they're talking about of their understanding back then is just someone who's gonna be drinking, you know, kind of just enjoying things that are a little too much, eating too much, drinking too much, um, finding our peace of mind in something other than God, other than the good work and the vocation that he's called us to. Um, and so I think it's important as that, that as well, that like when you're seeking out instruction or when you're helping and giving instruction to make sure as always, and this goes for everybody, to just try our best to, whenever I find myself feeling like I gotta pick up my phone, I gotta pick up my phone, I gotta check something, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I don't gotta do nothing, I gotta put that down. You know, like if I'm feeling like I'm starting to like gain an addiction to something, like I'm really wanting to read this book, or I'm really wanting, like it's, like it's surpassing just, oh, I'm enjoying this. Then I really try to check myself and try to work through that because those little things, especially in our day and age, it's so easy to get that quick addiction to things. Um, and so I think, you know, it's important that, you know, we wanna find someone who is trying constantly to seek out God's will for their life, Someone who's, um, and by the way, guys, this, you know, biblical standard, sometimes when we read it, we're like, man, this sounds like really, really hard. <laughs> or like, it's really hard to find someone that's living just perfectly. And I know it says, um, Matthew uh, 5, 48, to be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. And we are called to this, but on our own, it's impossible. It's only by God's grace. So we pray for it. We ask for his help. We ask for his mercy. We ask pour your grace out on us so we can become better every day. So, you know, if you're trying to live up to this as being a Titus II woman, it is hard, you know, but we call on him. We ask him for his help and his grace. And if we're seeking out women that are trying to live a holy life and trying to serve God, are they going to be absolutely perfect? Probably not. But if they're striving to live like the Lord and asking him for his grace, I mean, that's pretty darn awesome. And that leads to the next thing about teaching what is good. I remember my Titus II woman, I knew her years ago, I and mean, I still have kind of, you know, we still talk sometimes, but I remember always recognizing that she was teaching good and holy instruction to her children. Whenever I would come to her with an issue, she would always direct me back to the Lord. She was always instructing in goodness and holiness and truth, and that is amazing. So basically that kind of wraps up verse three. It's really funny because when you first look into Titus two, you're like, this video is going to be like two minutes long because it's so short, but y'all it's not. There is so much here in these three verses. So that's verse three. Okay guys. So verse four, it's beautiful. Okay. So we, we continue it. It says, similarly, older women should be reverent in their behavior, not slanders, not addicted to drink, teaching what is good. Now we're beginning verse four so that they may train younger women to love their husbands and children. 
So again, it seems very short, but there is so much there as well. To love your husband in this day and age, I feel can be very hard because I feel like the chips are stacked up against us. <laughs> a lot of us, and maybe you don't feel this way, but I know a lot of women, including myself, I grew up in the 90s, basically, and it was just this constant attack <laughs> on, I felt, my femininity, and also really women trying, older women having good intentions, but trying to make sure that I never end up in an abusive relationship. But in that process, it makes you extremely weary of men and anything to do with their what it means to be a man. Um, I feel like there are men who are very abusive and then there are men that just have very manly qualities and their manly qualities have been almost like attacked as abusive qualities when they're not. I wanna be clear about this. If a woman is in an abusive relationship, if she is being physically harmed or terribly emotionally harmed, um, I am not suggesting that she just sit there and take it because she's a good Christian woman. I do not mean that because when we take it, that saying, that's like enabling their sin and we don't want to do that. So even if you have to get the heck out of there, <laughs> that sounds, you know, you are loving them more by walking away from them so they cannot continue to sin and you're loving yourself in that way. At the same time, I know it's very hard to leave those type of relationships sometimes. So I'm not, you know, putting down any woman who is having a hard time with that either. And I know guys, I, I say a lot of this and that, but I'm just trying to be clear because sometimes when it comes to Christian instruction, especially for women, if we are not clear, it can become confusing. Like we don't want to just say, you just stay for any reason. Like some things we have to be clear about, especially when it comes to abuse. But at the same time, I think that that word abuse has been thrown around a little too much. Um, sometimes with the behavior of, of some men. Like if a man is just emotionally distant and he doesn't know how to communicate very well and then someone says, well, he's emotionally abusing me, he might not be. He might just not know how to communicate very well. Um, so I don't wanna stay on that topic too much and if you want, we can go into further depth of that. And um, But I just, I just wanted to say that because I feel like it's stacked up against us as Christian women, if we were not, especially raised with a Christian mindset, or maybe, anyway, um, that we have these these ideas of like, I have, or if you, gosh, if you love romantic movies, which I don't, I've never liked them, I like action, but anyway, but um, I think that's real romance right there, he's like dying for her, but, um, but romantic movies gives you this false idea of a lot of times what most men are like. Some men are like that, but most men aren't. So anyway, that's a long spiel. But train younger women to love their husbands and their children. So for husbands, this is what I'm saying. I wrote down gift of self. That's what love is. Like we are giving of ourselves to our spouse, helping them to get to heaven. That's our primary goal if your vocation is marriage, is helping your spouse get to heaven, serving them, not seeking a reward. This was huge for me. I thought the whole point basically of a relationship was that I do something good and then I get like affirming because that's part of my love language is to be affirmed. But I had to really work hard for years to literally serve, love, do everything without ever expecting any type of affirming back. And that might sound extreme to some people, but for me it was almost freeing because I had to let that go. The dishes need to be washed because they need to wa be washed. The floor needs to be swept because it needs to be swept. Not because I'm gonna sweep it and then wait and then my husband will say, wow, you did a great job. The floor needs to be swept. Beds need to be made. Things need to be done regardless if I'm gonna say or get someone to say great job to me. So for me, that was a big struggle. And for other women are probably like, that sounds so silly lady. Like these things just need to be done. But maybe your love language or your way of hoping for your spouse to recognize you is different. And I just think it's important, at least for me, I felt, that's one of the things that I learned from my Titus II woman was to do good work because it's good work. To walk my vocation because it's my vocation. Not because I'm constantly asking myself, well, what am I gonna get out of it? Where's my reward? You know, what are you doing for me? But let those words go to the, go to the side and worry about my good work and how I'm gonna do what I need to do to then in turn do good for this other person. So for, um, for that, that was important. And then for children, for the good of the child, that they may really know God. Y'all, it's like kind of warm in this homeschool room and I'm getting that red uh, 
glow. <laughs> it's just getting warm. It's like snow outside and then it's so warm in here. Okay, so this might be different for everyone, but the best I can do is just to give my own feel on this <laughs> for the good of the child. I really feel strongly as a Christian mother, as any mother, that um, for me, okay, that I feel that when I'm raising my children, I'm doing the good for them. And I'm not expecting anything in return. I can ask and I can be, you know, this is what would be nice, you know, but I don't do things, at the beginning I kind of did a little bit, but um, I don't do things for anything in return. When I change my baby's diaper or get them dressed or bathe them, I do it for their good because they need these things. When um, I, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's for their good. When I instruct them with their homeschooling, like it's for their good. I, I think it's a fine line between doing something good for your child because it's good for them and then doing it because you want you know, to have good results out in public or you want people to think a certain way about you as a woman or a mother. But really in the end, that kind of has to be pushed away and be what is the good for the child. And that's one thing I recognize in the Titus two women around me was they really did good for their children, for the good of their child or children and love them. And like I always say, you know, are we all perfect? No, of course not. But I think that's an important thing is to, to, to be instructed in loving our children for their own sake. The same with our spouse to loving them for their own sake and not with what we're going to get in return. I mean, hey, it's wonderful, it says in the Bible, you know, that, you know, they will rise up and call her blessed. That's awesome. <laughs> That's wonderful. But that can't be, I feel, personally, the goal of my mothering. My mothering is to pour out my love into them and to help them and to encourage them for their own sake and for their, go their own good. And if they rise up and call me blessed, that's wonderful. But that cannot be my main focus. And so I feel like when we're, you know, around a Titus II woman, we're going to see that within her family. We're going to see that within her children's heart. And part of that is that our children may really know God. You know, when I'm, when I'm teaching them about our Lord, um, depending on what I'm using, what kind of curriculum, what kind of guide I'm using, um, sometimes I, I have to kind of omit things. If anything is like, you must love God. I, I really want them to understand, you know, the commandments. I want them to understand our walk with our Lord. I want them to understand his, his gift to us and his, you know, death and resurrection. But I never want it to be something that is so pushed that it becomes forced or it becomes just something that, I don't know, it just shouldn't be, it sh you know, it's hard, I guess it's hard to explain that, but I just think that that's an important part too, is that my Titus II women in my life really showed me that they really, they really love their children and they really help their children through their love to see the love of God. And I think that's, that's really beautiful and really important. So that basically sums up verse four. So we have one more verse left, guys, if you're still with me. <laughs> so verse three, similarly, older women should be reverent in their behavior, not slanders, not addicted to drink, teaching what is good, verse four, so that they may train younger women to love their husbands and children, verse five, our last verse, to be self-controlled, chaste, good homemakers under the control of their husbands so that the word of God may not be discredited. This is the longest one yet. We saved the longest one for last, yeah. <laughs> okay, so the first thing, self-controlled. I love that it just starts off with that because that, y'all, if we do not have self-control, so many other things do not make any sense or they're so hard. And the same with like humility. Humility is like the foundation of all virtues. Um, but anyway, okay, so self-control. This is what I wrote down. I looked up some stuff and I got some things for you. It says controlling our emotions, mm, taking responsibility for our fallenness, not eating too much, not being scrupulous, but not taking, um, oh, okay, so I put this down. Not, okay, so not being scrupulous like, if I do not wash those dishes, I'm gonna go to hell. That's crazy, like, okay, that's scrupulous. But then the other side of it is talking ourselves out of our good work. Like, we have something to do and we're like, well, I am really tired. Or, well, do I really need to do that? I can just put it off for tomorrow. Like, like we, that was a big one for me. Like, I had to learn to not talk myself out of my good work. So, yeah. That's a big one, <laughs> not talking ourselves out of our good work. But um, just having self-control. Um, for me, also another big one was taking responsibility for you know, my fallenness, for the things that I, have done, I had done wrong. 
um, for the ways in which by my hands I had torn down our house and my homemaking, um, taking responsibility for those things and stop blaming my spouse or blaming this or blaming that. Now, sometimes you are exhausted or sometimes you really can't, you have to rest, but sometimes you really don't need to. Sometimes you can get up and do a lot more. Like I didn't realize how much I was capable of. <laughs> and then I started working harder and, you know, making a homemaking journal and, um, and planner and putting things together and getting things done and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my goodness, it really doesn't take that much time. It takes five minutes to pick this up or 10 minutes to do this. Um, so just being self-controlled in that way. And I found that the tightest two women that I was around were not just self-controlled in talk or, oh, we should be this way, but they got so much done and so much accomplished. One of them was their family home, you know, they were homesteading. And every time I would go visit her, she always had something going on. She was making cheese. The guys were butchering chickens and bringing up turns. She was weighing the meat out and packaging it. Um, she was crocheting. She was always doing something. And I remember hearing about that when I was a kid. My mom would say that her mother always had something going. Her hands were always busy. And that just really touched my heart. And I wanted to be that way. I wanted to be someone who was always giving as best I could and taking breaks when necessary, but only when necessary, not just taking a break. I remember that my Titus two woman told me once, she said, you know, the shade, like when you stand under something that has shade, the shade is only enjoyable when you've been walking out in the hot sun all day. So if we haven't been putting in our work, our good work, then that rest is not as enjoyable. It almost can borderline just laziness. But if we've worked hard and we sit down, we put our feet up, we have our coffee or whatever, all of a sudden that rest is so much more enjoyable. Okay, and the next one is chase. This is really important too, because I, I could put down pure in mind, thought and deed or work, modesty and holy beauty. This is, now this might be different for most people, but I find that the biggest part of this is if, you know, um, having, being a Titus II woman or being around a Titus II woman is a woman who is going to have um, kind of cleanliness in mind and not making inappropriate jokes, um, not finding impure things funny or tasteful, but finding them, you know, distasteful, um, finding ch chastity, beautiful, finding, um, you know, pure thoughts and good things like, you know, good books and good movies and wholesome things like positive and wonderful. Um, and at the same time, I'm not talking about being like, uh, if you have a question about something to do with intimacy and being able to talk about it with them in a healthy and good and a pure way is positive. That's something that you're wanting to do. Um, but I just wanted to be like, you know, well, if, you know, if he does it, then you do it kind of thing. Like if you find out that, you know, your spouse is looking at pornography and then you are talking to this woman about it and she's like, Pfft. Well, you know, oh, that's no big deal. Or like, what? That is a big deal. <laughs> it is a big deal. <laughs> and, you know, and also then not encouraging you as well to, to be fine with it. The guy just came in. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, so that's kind of to be chased, to kind of help young women to be chased and to be chased ourselves. And then um, the next one is good homemakers. This is like so near and dear to my heart because I love homemaking. Am I perfect at it? No. No, you should see our homeschool table all around me right now. It's covered in curriculum and books and um, homeschool DVDs and worksheets with fractions written all over the place. Like it could look a lot better, but I love it because the primary thing with homemaking is creating a home. And that is so special. Finding just the perfect like dishware that you know your family's gonna have every day and they're gonna grow up seeing this really sweet pattern or, you know, how, how are those curtains going to, to feel in the room where your children feel joyful? In our you know master bedroom, it's kind of like our oasis, like our special place. Like when we walk in, you know how can we make it where we feel like we want to be in there and it's, it's inviting? Um, I'm still working on that one because I need to find a comforter because the last thing I bought, like the bedspread, we got when we were in Texas and it was so hot. And now we're in the Midwest and it's freezing, so I need to get a more comfy comforter. Personally, in my walk as a homemaker, uh, it's very important to me to be home-centered. We homeschool. I'm really available to my spouse, my husband, when he has plans going because we're just working on his uh, time for his work. So I'm very home-centered. I can make you know things happen really quick. Um, also, if it's important to your spouse or to yourself to be a good hostess, to have a home that is welcoming to others. Because like I've said on other videos on here, our home is our like part of our ministry. So we might not be going out and getting involved in this ministry or that ministry, but our home is our ministry. Having a section for hospitality, having coffee and a teapot and tea bag and coffee, 
always ready, like in our home. It's something special. You can also have like hostess little bags when people come to visit. You have a nice little bag with some tea and like something really special to send home with them. That might be taking it over a bit if you're like, that's too much for me, lady. But that's a fun idea. Um, I saw someone post on a website, on a Facebook group the other day about having quick, um, like dinner ideas for hostessing. And I thought that was really fantastic. So anyway, so that's an important thing too. Also, um, coming up with practical and creative, I had to look at my thing, <laughs> practical and creative ways of keeping the home running. Meal planning is so paramount. I cannot even stress how important it is to meal plan. It will help so much, I promise you. <laughs> um, and the last thing I wanna say on being good homemakers is about keeping the scorecard. I had to let that go. In the early years of my marriage, it was all about, well, I did this, so what are you doing? Or, well, it's so much harder. Like, what I'm doing is so much harder than what you're doing. Like, that is not a marriage. <laughs> that is like keeping a contract or something. I don't know. I don't wanna say it's not a marriage, but it's just not a way to, like, encourage healthy, like, a healthy marital relationship by keeping a scorecard. I found, so I had to let that go. And I feel like a Titus II woman is being called to encourage a young woman to also let that go and to work hard as you can and do your best. So the last thing on here, or I have two more things, but one of them is, this is kind of a hard one because I think um, depending on how you read it is kind of how you take it. It can be kind of uncomfortable, but under their husband's control, um, that can really rub a lot of people the wrong way because we're not called to control each other, our husbands aren't called to control us, they're called to love us as Christ loved the church. Um, what I wrote down is under their husband's authority. Um, I have found that that has really been a blessing in our home is when I really tried to listen to what my husband was saying. Not what I thought he was saying or letting what he says come through some type of filter that I've learned from the world that maybe men are just, you know, controlling and carnal and all of these things, but really try to evaluate what he's saying by what I know about my husband and then trying to really honor and listen to him. Um, I wrote down, what are your husband's good God-given gifts? In what areas does he show healthy authority? What does he do really well? And those different areas, if we can really tune into that and really honor our husband, especially in those areas, then we can really be under his authority in a healthy way. Because your husband might not have the gifts that your friend's husband has or this guy in this romantic movie has, but your husband has his own wonderful God-given gifts and he has good gifts in certain areas that are gonna help him, you know, kind of help authority to come out in a stronger and a healthier way. And I just think if we kind of focus and on those things, we'll see it. Like my husband is an excellent leader. <laughs> he has amazing leadership skills and he's very reflective. Um, but if I'm not cautious and I don't have like study him and learn who he is, um, I had a really hard time in the beginning understanding what his gifts were. And now that I do understand them, basically he's like always right. Like basically always. <laughs> and since I know that now about my husband and I understand like his gifts and his strengths, it's so much easier for me as his wife to be under his authority. And also it's important, I just wanna say, for us to speak up as wives, like when we're having a hard time understanding them in a loving way and asking them to, like if they could explain themselves a little bit because we want to really follow what they're saying and honor them. And I think that if we ask them in a loving way, they'll be more inclined to try to explain themselves better and it will help us to understand their authority even more. I hope that makes sense. But I think as a Titus II woman, if you feel called to do this, it's important to help younger women to really look and seek out their husband's God-given authority, positive traits that they have, and good areas of their lives. And, and in reverse, if we know a Titus II woman, and we're, we're, or we're hoping this woman's our Titus II woman, and you notice that she is so respectful of her husband, and he really seems to just like just love her and care for her in a certain type of a way, maybe he always fills her gas tank up for her. Maybe he's always like fixing things around the house. Um, I think that we have it in our mind that the only way that a husband like really loves his wife in like the world is that if she's the boss and he just does whatever she wants. I do not agree with that at all, personally. I think that, um, you know, it's wonderful for a man to love his wife and to treat her with love and respect, of course, but I don't want that. I don't want to be, you know, the boss and I don't want my husband to just do whatever I say because sometimes I'm wrong. <laughs> 
a lot of times. Okay, <laughs> so anyway, the last thing is so that God's word may not be discredited. Um, this is interesting too. So what I looked up and I wrote down is saying we're Christian women and then living up to that high calling. Because ladies, it's a high calling. If, if anyone's ever said to you that the Christian life is easy or if it's like having a crutch or if it's like dot, 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 that is not true. The Christian walk is hard. I used to, my husband and I used to go to confession with this priest and um, he had this very thick, I don't even think he spoke English personally. I think he knew a little bit and so he could, he could hear confessions and he knew what to say, but every time you would confess with him, he would always say, it is hard to live a Christian life, every time. And we would kind of laugh about it because he would always say it. And then as we delve deeper into the Christian walk, we would start making a joke. Well, things would be really hard and we were like choosing to walk the Christian walk throughout a situation. And we would be like looking at each other like, it is hard to live the Christian life. Like it is so hard. <laughs> so anyway, so our calling is hot, is high up as women. If we are um, a young woman and we're seeking instruction and we are with a woman who you look at and you're like, how? How does she live this way? How does she um, you know, love the Lord and her family so well and seek God's instruction and honor her husband and raise up her children to just love and serve the community and the world? And yeah, people make mistakes in her home, but she has a home where mistakes are allowed and where mercy reigns. And oh, like, it's so beautiful. I'm about to, <clears throat> I gotta calm down. I'm about to start crying, but I just, I, our call is so beautiful and such a high call as Christian women. And I just, I hate to see it just be thrown to the wayside like it's something that's not special and wonderful and a high calling. And so I wanted to make this video, I doubt that very many people are still here with me <laughs> at this point in the video, because it's a long video, but it seems so, like nothing, like a tiny bit, tiny part of the Bible. But it is huge to, to find a woman who is your Titus II woman who is going to instruct and help you walk in this Christian walk and do it well. And then when you feel like God is starting to call you to that side of it where you're going to start to walk as that Titus II woman to other women, um, it's, a, it's a high calling. And it's not something to be taken lightly and to just say, oh, it's, it'll all work out. Like, you know, um, to pour ourselves, like I always say, you know, I have my vocation and I have my good work. Like, I, I don't wanna just sit around and take it lightly. You know, I want to work hard in this life and we don't have very much time here. We, sometimes we have a lot less than we even think we have. And, um, and I just really, when people started asking me to make this video, I wanted to sit down and really pour over the word of God and to take my time to piece it together in a way that would either help us to find a Titus to woman and to kind of identify what that looked like and also to be a Titus to woman to other women and that it is a high calling as a Christian woman either way to look for someone to walk this walk or to have been walking it and now you're helping to instruct younger Christian women. So um, if you're new to my channel, I'd love for you to subscribe. Um, I'd love when you guys give me ideas for videos to do. Sometimes it takes me a little while to get it out because I like to plan and prep for y'all. But, um, but yeah, so if you like this, give it a thumbs up and let me know if you guys have any questions from this or if you would like me to do a further kind of, I don't want to say instruction because like I said, like I don't know if I'm qualified, but as the best of my ability um, by pouring over scripture and praying and seeking the will of God and his church, like teaching, I will do the best I can to do the videos for you guys that you ask for me to do. So I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a long one. <laughs> But I'll talk to you guys later. God bless.